so thank you god sir for inviting me today and uh, my name is uh, dr das and i am in this india china cultural field for about uh, from past to from 2015 onwards before that one actually i was uh, practicing as a medical doctor in china so this is only short about my brief i will tell so i just go on with my presentation okay the presentation is on india and china people to people relations mostly i will concentrate on the education and the cultural part uh, this picture you can see which was taken uh, in 2014 in new delhi where you can see our indian prime minister and uh, chinese president they are witnessing the signing ceremony of the mou between our previous uh, external affairs minister and the chinese foreign minister for the indian pilgrimage to visit to the tibet autonomous region in the kailash mansarovar yatra okay, this is a brief about uh, what we get in china regarding india china and india are the both ancient civilizations boosting a long history and rich culture in the ancient texts of the chinese it is called as the shi ji a book written during the han dynasty uh, there only we can get the earliest record of about our indian's connection with china this is called in english as the records of the historian and in chinese the name is shi ji in that one the india is called as the sindhu because of the river sin uh, the sindh river which at that time it was crossing through so this depicts that the cultural exchanges and influences between china and india have a long history the records of the his grand historian shi ji it was written by one chinese historian sima chien whose father sima than who began this uh, records a, about more than a decades earlier okay this is uh, about ravindranath tagore he visited china two times in 1924 and 1928 this is uh before the formation of china by the communist party so in china his name people knows by the name of ju jandan so people does not know him as rabindranath tagore uh here in the picture you can see uh, uh rabindranath tagore is meeting with the sikh community in shanghai uh during that period in shanghai there was a large community of sikh who even uh, made gurudwara and that gurudwara is uh, still now present okay so now coming to the india china cultural and education part and also the people to people exchanges uh, it is determined by three aspects the first is the government level which our external affairs ministry of india and the foreign ministry of china or the city to city level like the sister cities or friendship cities it is carried out and then comes the non governmental level like the social society, uh, civil society organizations and the friendship associations or the individuals like uh, ourselves uh, the scholars students and even the traders they take forward this one and the third is the non government and the government joining together and uh, doing this cooperations to enhance the bilateral relations the government of india and china has always played an important role you can see from the 2006 onwards uh, in 2006 it was india china friendship year in 2010 on december 16 a joint communique between uh, republic of india and china was signed and that period of time both india and china recognized the importance of education and the cultural exchange similarly 2011 was the year of india china exchange 2014 was the year of friendly exchanges between india and china and in june 30 2014 an encyclopedia of india china cultural contact which was released in both english and chinese version simultaneously uh, it was released by the honorable vice presidents of india and china in uh, beijing in 2020 it was a uh, completion of 70 years of india china diplomatic relations and cultural contacts that is the last one so this is just a, a overview you know in the brief so what happened between 1949 to 2005 after the formation of the china by the communist party so india first recognized this china as the uh, communist party 
uh, getting up there in the most important two parts which is uh, which i felt in the cultural sector or the education sector it comes is in the june 1954 uh, premier jo and lai visits india and signs the panchashil or the five principles of peaceful coexistence and in october 1954 a trade agreement between the people's republic of china and republic of india is signed in new delhi the other than that one are mostly the mostly the diplomatic uh, level engagements after the 1962 war uh, it is only prime minister vajpayee who visits china in 1979 it was the high level political contact between the two countries after a long period of 17 long years he met with uh, president deng xiaoping and started the new chapter in the india china relations from this period of onwards only our cultural sector or the peace and the people to people exchanges uh, were engaged more uh, this was the one um, this is one indian style buddhist temple in loyang loyang is uh, in hanan province it is more nearby to the shaolin temple uh, it is considered one of the cradles of chinese civilization and the four great ancient capitals of china other than the beijing nanjing and xian Uh, it is famous for the longman brothels this buddhist cave are a unesco world heritage site the second famous place in loyang is the white horse temple which has also a very strong connection to with india two indian monks kashyapa matanga and dharma ratna came to china carrying with them the buddhist scriptures on white horses then emperor ming di built this temple in their uh, in their horses honor in his capital city of loyang the indian monks settled there and translated many texts into chinese thus paving way for a spread of buddhism in china hence the name of the temple is white horse temple the construction of the temple started in 2006 and completed in 2009 it is an example where india china used religion uh, buddhism as a soft diplomacy together This idea was introduced during 2003 when Prime Minister Bajpay visited China. Uh, this is a picture of Prime Minister Bajpay visiting the Loyang Temple, and in between you can see the monk. And in the right hand side, it is the government representative from Hanan Province. Okay, now in the 2006, uh, in 2006 it is the India-China friendship year. Uh, we had. Uh, this many academics and publications which was carried on it was in a large scale level the people to people contact and cultural exchanges even the youth exchanges we can see even in the tourism level also uh, many of our from our india side they visited china indian food festival which happened in china indian photographic exhibition uh, by the chinese photographers launching of the chinese language website by india's ministry of tourism economic and commercial level exchanges by the, our ficci and cii from the indian side and the china spark cccit between 2006 to 2010 i feel there are only three exchanges which are into the uh, people to people exchanges that is in 2008 that is the bilateral trade which broke 50 billion mark and china became india's largest trading partner group and in december 2009 uh, dwarka kotni honored as one of the 10 best international friends of china by uh, chinese people association for friendship with foreign countries cpa ffc in 2010 16th anniversary of bilateral relation commemorated through festivals of india in china and festivals of china in india in 2010 december 16th a joint communique of republic of india and people's republic of china was signed it was also the 16th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the republic of india and the people's republic of china at the invitation of his excellency Uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh and Prime Minister, and uh, His Excellency Mr. Wen Jiabao, Premier of uh, China, uh, came for a state visit to India uh, in the period of between 15 to 17 December 2010. And uh, 
the two countries had an in-depth exchange of views on bilateral relations, regional and international issues, mutual interest in sincere and friendly atmosphere, and reached broad consensus. Uh, concluded a memorandum of understanding between the Reserve Bank of India and China Banking Regulatory Commission to increase banking and financial cooperation. India and China also agreed to grant permission to the banks of the other country to open branches and representative office modalities will be worked out by the concerned authority. In 2011, was the China-India exchange year. Both sides had a series of people-to-people -people and cultural exchange activities and signed a memorandum of, on joint compilation for the Encyclopedia of India-China Cultural Contact. A 500-member Indian youth delegation also visited China during that period. In 2012 was the year of China-India friendship and cooperation. President Hu Jintao and Premier Wen Jiabao met with Indian Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, respectively on the sidelines of the fourth BRICS summit and United Nations conference on sustainable development. A 500 member of Chinese youth delegation visited India. In 2014, the China-India friendly exchange year, President Xi Jinping paid a visit to India and visited Indian Prime Minister then Narendra Modi home state Gujarat. The two sides issued joint statement on building a closer development partnership. In the same year, President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Keqiang met with Prime Minister Modi respectively on the sidelines of the sixth BRICS summit and leaders meeting on the East Asia Corporation in Myanmar. Uh, this 2014, the Encyclopedia of India-China Cultural Contacts was published. The work compilation, uh, compilation of the Encyclopedia was undertaken by its Joint Compilation Committee comprising of officials and scholars from both India and China. The Encyclopedia was released in both English and Chinese version simultaneously by the Honorable uh, President of Vice Presidents of India and China on June 30, 2014. The Encyclopedia features over 700 entries encapsulating the rich history of contacts and exchanges between the two countries in trade, economy, literature, culture, and philosophical spheres. Uh, there is a link below, which I will share with all of you uh, through Dr. Gautar. You can download the three versions of this book. In 2015, Indian Prime Minister Modi visited China and went to President Xi Jinping's hometown, Xi'an. In the same year, President Xi Jinping and uh, Premier Li Keqiang met with Prime Minister Modi, respectively, on the sidelines of the 7th BRICS Summit in USA and the leaders' meetings on East Asia Corporation in Malaysia. China decided to open the Nathula Pass to Indian official pilgrims to Xi'an. India celebrated the India Tourism Year in China. In 2016, Indian President uh, Mukherjee visited China Prime Minister Modi visited China to attend the G20 summit in Hangzhou and met with President Xi. President Xi visited India to participate the 8th BRICS summit in Goa and met with Prime Minister Modi on the sidelines. China celebrated China Tourism Year in India. In 2017, President Xi Jinping met with Modi on the sidelines of SCO summit in Astana. Modi visited China to attend the 9th BRICS summit in Xiamen and met with President Xi Jinping on the sidelines. In 2018 was the first informal summit, the high-level mechanism on cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. It was sponsored between the Indian Prime, Prime Minister and Chinese President. It was the first informal summit which happened at Wuhan between April 27 to 28, 2018. After the first informal summit, we got the first high-level mechanism on cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges in 2018. Uh, here in the picture, you can see our Shrimati Sushma Swaraj Madam and uh, Foreign Affairs Minister China's Wang Yi. They had the book released on assets in memory of Shu Function during the India-China Cultural Living Evening at Pravasi Bharatiya Kendra in New Delhi. Uh, this is the book. 
on SSC memory of Professor Xu Fangsheng. Uh, the Symposium on Xu Fangsheng, the book Essays in Memory of Xu Fangsheng is a compilation of the speech and essays from the event which was organized at Pondicherry on March 10, 2018, the Symposium on Xu Fangsheng. Then that period of time, uh, the Ambassador Luo Jiawei and Madam Ambassador uh, visited Pondicherry. The event was organized by us and uh, there were scholars from China and both India. Uh, you can see here Wang Xinchuan, Professor Priyadarshi, Professor Nirmala Sharma, and various other scholars. And also the picture you can see, our the chief minister, our previous chief minister was also present. Then the second high-level mechanism on cultural and people-to-people -people exchange, it happened on August 12, 2019. India and China in five agreements to boost cultural and people-to-people -people ties. Indian and Chinese sides signed five agreements in the fields of foreign affairs, cultural exchanges, sport cooperation, museum cooperation, and cooperation in traditional medicine. In 2019, the second informal summit happened in October 12. The Prime Minister, our India's Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, and President Xi Jinping held their second meeting at Chennai between 11 to 12 October 2019. Both appraised the practice of informal summit in positive light and providing an important opportunity to defend the dialogue and promote mutual understanding at the leaders level in line with the Wuhan spirit and the Chennai Connect. They agreed to continue this practice in the future. President Xi invited Prime Minister Modi to visit China for the third informal summit. Prime Minister Modi accepted the invitation on 11th October 2019, President Xi met with Prime Minister Modi at Mahabali Puram, Tamil Nadu, India for the second informal meeting. And Modi, uh, between this period of time, 2014 to 2019, President Xi and Modi met about 18 times. So this is the Chennai Connect. Mainly it is about connecting Mahabali Puram and Chuanzhou city in China. Mahabali Puram and Chuanzhou has a historical connection. Because Chuanzhou, China, in a, it is considered as the largest Buddhist temple in Fujian province. And Tamil Sea traders made Chuanzhou as an important port city in historical time. After that, in December 2019, 15 December, uh, Chuanzhou's delegation paid a visit to Tamil Nadu. Simultaneously, our from the government of Tamil Nadu delegation visited Fujian province in 17 December, uh, taking forward the Chennai Connect. So now sharing my personal experiences. So where I started was in 2016. In 2016, I accompanied the Pondicherry tourism minister, Mr. Lakshmin Aran, in his visit to Dali city. Dali University and Pondicherry University corporations for the sports science in the exchange of yoga and tai chi and a traditional Chinese medic, uh, medical center at Pondicherry and tourism corporation. These three uh, were the main areas where Pondicherry and Dali city, uh, they were engaged in the talks. Uh, a minutes of the meeting for the bilateral relationship with Pondicherry government and Dali city was signed at that period of time. Um, this is a letter from the Dali city to, for opening the physical in education institute with the Dali university and uh, a yoga training in Dali with the Pondicherry university and also the traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture hospital and training center to be opened at Pondicherry. This is uh, a period of uh, in 2016. In 2017, 11 September, uh, we met with uh, Ambassador Luo Jiawei, inviting him for giving a keynote speech on the symposium on Shu Fanshan and also seeking support from Chinese embassy. Ambassador Luo Jiawei was a student of Professor Shu Fanshan. So now comes is who is Professor Shu Fanshan. Actually, Professor Shu Fanshan, he lived in India for a period of 33 years. 
He was a Chinese Sanskrit scholar, polyglot, translator, painter, and a poet. He translated many Indian philosophical literature to classical Chinese, such as our Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Kalidasa's Meghdutam, Sri Aurobindo's work. And uh, he lived in Pondicherry for a period of 27 years, from 1951 to 1978. And from 1945 to 1950, he lived in Shantini Ketan. These are some of his works. In the left-hand side, you can see uh, this is a Chinese calligraphy. It is the Oroville Charter, uh, handwritten by Professor Xu Fanchan. Also, in, uh, in the right-hand side, you can see the book of uh, Bhagavad Gita, which is right now kept in the Shanghai National Museum in China. And below are some of his paintings. There are about more than 300 paintings done by Professor Shu uh, which you can find at Pondicherry right now. So in 2018, the Chinese ambassador visits and uh, he gave the keynote speech for the symposium on Professor Shu Fanzhan. In May 9, 2018, we established the Pondicherry India China Friendship Association. Our This is Pondicherry India China Friendship Association. Uh, it is a little bit different from the India China Friendship Association, which are actually running from a period, uh, I think from 1947, it is there. Uh, so our association and uh, this uh, India-China Friendship Association is uh, totally in the different guidelines because uh, ours is uh, mostly registered in Pondicherry and the other uh, India-China Friendship Associations, which are in other parts of India, I think they are registered in New Delhi and the Bombay, uh, sorry, uh, Bangalore. So after uh, um, establishing the Pondicherry India China Friendship Association, we did few of the important events which I want to show. In 12th February 2018, um, we attended the conferences on uh, by the think tanks, the uh, Chennai Center for China Studies. Uh, similarly, we organized some events like the Chinese Mid Autumn Festival with Chinese diaspora living at Pondicherry. Um, most of our works were on Shu Fanchang. Uh, we had Shu Fanchang panel exhibitions in the various places of Pondicherry and Tamil Nadu. In 2019-18 March, we organized a fusion event introducing Indian classical dance at China's National Stone Museum, Dali. Again, in 28 March 2019, a group of 16 photographers from Dali City visited Pondicherry and they organized a, a photography exhibition on the transitional lifestyles in Dali, that is the ethnic peoples who are living in uh, the Dali province, they showcased them. Same in 2019, March 28, uh, I attended the Boa Forum for Asia. It was the Youth Exchange Forum on Social Media Influence. Taking the opportunity, I introduced about initiating the India-China Cultural Study Center. In July 17, 2019, in Shaolin Seminar on Bodhidharma and Mahayana Buddhism, I presented my research studies on Bodhidharma and his origins from Southern India. This was the first ever recorded document about Bodhidharma's origin from India, being submitted to Shaolin Temple. Fourteen July 2019, Chinese Embassy delegation visited Pondicherry. In 2019, 17th August, uh, we organized another exhibition in Dali uh, with the title of Incredible India, Pondicherry Photography Exhibition. In 
in 2019, around the December period, we attended the Intangible Cultural Heritage Exhibition, where we showcased India's uh, heritage, uh, heritage works, mostly the terracotta work, kalamkari, and handmade incense, mostly from the Southern India. Now 2020, 2020 marked the year of 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between India and China. It is also the China-India year of cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. The two sides agreed to hold 70 celebrity activities to demonstrate the historic connections between the two civilizations, as well as their growing bilateral relationships over the years, further deepening the people-to-people -people exchanges between the two countries at all levels, including between their respective legislatures, businesses, academic, cultural, and youth organizations, as well as the different forces. October 26, 2020, we initiated the Shufanchen Culture Study Center. It was the 111th birth anniversary of Shufanchen, and uh, on the occasion of China India Year of Culture and People to People Exchanges. Ambassador Sun Wei Dong, uh, he participated online, and our Chief Minister of Pondicherry was there, Tourism Minister of Pondicherry, and uh, Dali University, and uh, uh, Dali uh, uh, from the uh, government of Dali and the government of Zhongshan City were also present. So until 2020, what happened between India and China, I made a little brief. Since the beginning of the 21st century, trade between China and India grown from less than 3 billion to 100 billion, an increase of 32 times. In 2019, trade volume between China and India was 92.68 billion. More than uh, 1,000 Chinese companies increased their investment in industrial parks, e-commerce, and other areas in India. With a two lakh local jobs created. Indian companies also actively expanded the Chinese market with cumulative investment of nearly 1 billion US dollars in China. According to Indian statistics, more than two thirds of Indian companies investing in China are making steady profits. With a combined market of 2.7 billion and GDP of 20% of the world's total, China and India enjoy a huge potential and broad prospects of economic and trade cooperation. Chinese companies cumulative investment in India is more than 8 billion US dollars. This is for the period of 2020. There are two Confucius Institutes and three language Chinese language center, which is run right. I think it is run right now also in India. Around 20 universities in India offers Chinese languages, among which eight provides a major in Chinese studies. The contest of Chinese bridge Chinese proficiency competition for foreign secondary school students in India has been held for 12 sessions. The contest of the Chinese bridge, Chinese proficiency competition for foreign university students, 18 times. The two countries have established 14 pairs of sister cities and provinces and will establish the sister provinces and cities between Fujian province and Tamil Nadu, that is Chenzhou city and Chennai city. China has established one Nuban workshop and one Nuban North Cultural Institute in India. Uh, the Nuban workshop is uh, in Chennai, which have trained more than 200 technical Indian students. Over 2,000 young Chinese are studying in India and more than 20,000 Indian youths are studying in China. Cooperation in the field of education between the two countries has been continuously strengthened. In 2021, December 10th, in the 112th birth anniversary of Shu Panchan, we organized a forum on India-China cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. The tourism minister of Pondicherry, and uh, from the China side, there were from Zhoshan city, Dali city, uh, Dali university, uh, they were present here. In 2022, October 20, uh, sorry, in 2022, June 1st, uh, not October 26th, uh, recently only, we organized the India China Cultural and People to People Exchanges Part 2, marking the 100 year commemoration of poet Subramaniam Bharatiya. Uh, uh, Ambassador Sunway Dong came in person with Madam Ambassador Daina Bao, 
and the cultural uh, cult cultural counselor was also present. On the same day, ambassador visited our center and had a in depth discussion on how to improve furthermore in the future. So until now, right now the situation is following the Galwan Valley clash in 15 June 2020. There were renewed calls across the India to boycott China's goods. However, numerous Indian government officials said that border tensions would have little impact on trade. On 29 June 2020, the Indian government banned 59 widely used Chinese mobile phone desktop applications in response to rising tensions and escalating diplomatic disputes between the two nations. On 19th August, Times of India reported that the Ministry of External Affairs of India has been told that visa for Chinese businessmen, academics, industry experts, and advocacy groups will need prior security clearance, and the measures are similar to those that have been non employed with Pakistan. Uh, thank you, everyone. So, I hope in brief this lecture was enough. It is more than from a lecture, my own experiences, which I shared. And I wish others can question me more, you know. I will be very happy to talk it up, you know, and uh, discuss about my own experiences in this, uh, what I have done until now. So thank you, Dr. Das. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much for uh, such a wonderful presentation. You are really a crusader. You are working for the closer cultural and educational ties between two Asian nations. Thank you, sir. They have historical relations, they have cultural relations, religious, uh, so far as uh, contacts are concerned, they are there from centuries. And uh, both have been on the right side for a very long time. And there was a time when uh, the slogans like uh, Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai uh, were rented. And uh, I can say that uh, uh, there should have been some misunderstanding uh, in the approach, in the perceptions of the various issues and all that. So before I uh, say something, I would like to ask my uh, students, my interns, to uh, satisfy their queries. I know a, a number of uh, students must be having a number of questions, I know. So yeah. now I yeah. uh, leave the house uh, uh, for the interns. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, put your questions uh, in a simple and clear manner. And uh, in the first instance, we will have only one question from each intern. And if time allows, uh, we will allow you for a second question. So only one question at a time. So please go on and be quick. Yes, come on. And I think uh, the very first question should have been from Indian students that what are the opportunities for Indian students uh, to study China in Chinese universities? Of course, I know, uh, I mean, uh, many things about uh, China's uh, educational uh, setup and system and all that. I myself visited there in 19, I mean, 2014 for international conference. And then I came to know many uh, I mean, novel things about uh, uh, the Chinese education system. So I think the very first question arises for Indian students. What are the opportunities, facilities, uh, the scholarship that are available to Indian students? Okay. So uh, I think that is satisfied many of our okay. <laughs> Indian university students. Okay. So if you could throw light on this, I will be very thankful to you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, see, to, for the students to study in China, right now, the majority of the students which are going to China, it is uh, in the medical field. But uh, I will tell, uh, 
currently, right now, it is not a good idea to go to China to study medicine. First of all, why? Uh, what are the disadvantages and advantages that I tell? In the medical field, yes, the advantages is the price is lesser than India. You don't need to pay any um, other fees, you know, which is uh, charged in India. In China, it is only the tuition fees, which I think uh, about uh, right now from 1 lakh to 2 lakhs only in the medical, only to join in China. And after come, uh, studying from China, you have to come back to India and you have to give the MCI. And yes, uh, right now, in the last year, I think so only about uh, maybe a handful of students only have joined in the medical field just after this uh, pandemic. Before the pandemic, it was a huge number of more students. So medical field, I will not prefer for the students, actually. Uh, second is, uh, yes, if you can learn the HSK, it is similarly like the European nations. When you go to a European country, uh, you see that uh, you have to learn the language and you get the uh, basic advantage in that uh, in their programs. For example, if you go to France, right? Uh, you if you know the language, if you pass their uh, the the language course, then you can get a free uh, education. Similarly, the China follows a similar based system, you know. And also uh, in China, one thing which is uh, not similar with India is in Indian. We like to study more long-term education, like uh, three years, five years. But in China, they prefer more for a short-term education system, which uh, uh, many people does not know. Short-term in the sense means like a diploma course or a certificate course. Just they teach you how to learn that basic skills, and uh, you are you can even get a job. You know. This is also similarly uh, similar to the European states. Yes, uh, there are some scholarship programs. Scholarship programs, uh, there is one uh, website which I will share with you all. I will share with sir, sir can share with you all. Uh, you can pass the HSK, I think uh, band four and band six and according to that one, you can get a uh, full term scholarship in China. I think most of the students right now here is in the international relation. So you have to pass the HSK exam. Uh, this is a must. Yes, uh, in uh, just now recently, ambassador, when Chinese ambassador visited in June 1st, he also told about uh, from next year, uh, the India-China Friendship Association and other uh, civil society organizations which are related with India-China, they will, they will be given certain uh, scholarships, you know, scholarships for the Indian students to uh, promote this education. So this is in the next year. Let's see if something comes up. I will talk with God sir and uh, provide some of uh, some of the seats to sir also so that he can distribute it up. You know. Apart from that, China is good for studying in the architecture, which I feel. The architecture, uh, architecture will be a best idea to go to China for study. Then is the engineering and the IT sector. If really you know, if you can learn the Chinese language. And uh, as I told you that uh, Chinese based education is similar, just similar to the European based, European based one. Short term studies are much more preferred. Even their medical books are very small. I think uh, this much will be clear, sir, right? Yeah. Uh, are there any uh, any uh, schemes uh, uh, offered by China to uh, promote this people to people context? What about the uh, visa restrictions? I mean, uh, are there any visa restrictions for Indians visiting China? Uh, no. Right now, yes. Right now, because of the pandemic, this, there are no flights, of course. Uh, before the pandemic and before the Galwan clash, it was the whole yeah. scenario was different. Yeah. Right now, after the Galwan clash, uh, slowly, slowly, it has deteriorated at a very lowest point. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Yes. I will. Since I am doing this people to people relations, one thing I will tell is I have never got any uh, hindrance for neither from our government side, neither from China government side. They have never interfered into the cultural or people-to-people -people part. 
but there are no uh, there are no ways you know you can connect like the whatsapp it's, it's not used by the chinese right we can't yes. use the wechat yeah. if you want to contact a chinese only through the zoom right zoom and the email even the email if you write through a gmail it goes to their spam folder so only a direct contact is left right now that a indian person can go to china and meet a chinese and a chinese person can come to india other than that the social media apps does not work it is from both the side india of course it is because due to the galwan valley clash they have banned the apps but china has done this one i think in 2005 or 2004 onwards you know they have banned the google youtube and all even facebook so social media does not work in china you know you only have to use the chinese social media apps okay so uh, uh, dr das you will be surprised when i talk to to an indian university student Uh, why don't you go to China or Japan? I mean, particularly Japan, China uh, for uh, studies. Say, sir, the Facebook is banned there. <laughs> That is the greatest obstacle. <laughs> I mean, between the two, even 